We all know Adobe Animate's brush tool can be challenging, so in this video we'll cover some tips to get the best out of the Animate brush engine and yourself as an animator. Tip -tot. Hello everybody and welcome back to Tip Tut. Today we're tackling the troubling brush tool in Adobe Animate, which is, in a word, limiting. The addition of the Fluid Brush tool in recent versions of Animate made drawing your lines a little easier, but there are some simple configuration tips for both Animate and yourself that I've learned over the years that we can use to get the best out of the software. First up, we'll look at using the software properly with some brush setup. Then we'll explore some workflow tips that I've developed over the years specific to Adobe Animate. Then we'll tackle probably the most important thing, tips for you, the animator. So let's get started. Getting the best from the software, brush setup. So let's talk about the different brush tools and how their parameters affect your strokes. The classic brush. When working with the classic brush, the controls you have over it are very limited. So I found the best way to get good line work with this tool is to utilize the brush tip shapes that are available. The round curved tip shapes work well for longer straighter lines or lines with soft curves like body or limb lines. And the wedge or sharp tip shapes work best for hard corners, like the tips of hair or other spiky elements. Play around with the different angles and shapes available to see which you like. General rule, round shapes have less thickness variation, sharp edges tend to show more. You can up the smoothing for more controlled, clean lines, but if you want some texture and feeling to your line work, don't bother with the smoothing so much as this will leave in some of the natural wobbliness from your hand. If we use the direct selection tool, shortcut A, on our brush stroke, you'll see that the smoothing just reduces the amount of vertexes created when vectorizing your line work. This means that lower smoothing creates more complex shapes and therefore more detail is transferred from your hand movement and pressure to the line work. So bear that in mind. The fluid brush. The Fluid Brush gives us way more customization options than the Classic Brush, but requires slightly newer hardware. Some older systems won't support it. Stabilization and smoothing works in the same way as the Classic Brush. Increasing stabilization will remove a lot of the wobble from your hand, and curve smoothing will actively reduce vertexes found along curves. But again, pushing them too far will remove a lot of the character from your line work, if that's important to you. Curve smoothing and stabilization then are better for long swooping line work, but if you push them too far, you risk losing detail on the smaller bits. Roundness works in a similar way to the brush tip shape of the classic brush, affecting how circular or elliptic your brush tip is, giving you more of a calligraphic wedge shape. Angle will change the default rotation value of elliptical brushes. This is largely all about personal preference, but can make for nice variation in line thickness if used subtly. See the difference here in these test examples between angle zero and angle 90. Tapering thins out your brush strokes at the tip and tail of each stroke, which can be useful, but makes closing your lines tough. It's better for detail as opposed to borders that need to be closed. Velocity never seems to be enabled for me, so I suppose I should probably get wrecked. The pressure slider affects how much of your pen pressure affects the size of your stroke. Turning this too high can sometimes lead to unstable line work, but this one will depend largely on your tablet and how heavy your hand is by default. You can also flip the pressure around by going to negative 100, so a light touch makes a thick line and vice versa. Looks kind of cool, like a broken ink pen or Japanese Shodafude brush. I'm sure these max pressure blobs at the start of every stroke are 100% an intended feature, not a bug. The paintbrush tool. The paintbrush and pencil tools work differently to the brush tools. Instead of drawing lines based on your input, you're essentially stretching a single vector image over the path that you draw. You can also swap out that vector image whenever you'd like. As such, they're not really applicable for this video, but for certain visual styles, they are kind of cool. They work better as cutout animation tools, but can be useful for frame by frame animators. So let me know if you want me to go into them in detail in a separate video. Getting the best from the software, 
workflow tips. So apart from learning how to properly control the tools, which is important, it's also important to develop your own workflow. Here's a few tips that I've gathered over the years. Drivers. Let's get the obvious out of the way first. First, make sure your drivers for whatever graphics tablet you use are up to date and that your version of Adobe Animate supports them. With this in mind, sometimes toggling Windows Ink and doing a quick reboot will solve any pressure or tablet issues you'll be facing. Zoom in. Seriously, I've noticed the further I zoom in, within reason, when doing my final line work, the better results I get. This one is especially important if you've got a smaller drawing tablet as it gives you more freedom to move your arm. More on that later. However, I also find it has something to do with the software too. Probably to do with the vector equation based generation of the line work, giving the software more pixels to calculate the result. That line of reasoning could be absolute bullshit though. All I know is it seems to work better for me and I get more consistent results when zoomed in. Turn down preview quality. Draw in preview mode fast. This reduces or eliminates any kind of software hardware lag interfering with your line work and gives you a more responsive feeling when drawing strokes. It might not get you different results per se, but the feeling is much better. And when it comes to drawing, feeling is important. Sharp corners. If you want to get sharp corners where your lines intersect, or maybe you've drawn over the intersection slightly, instead of erasing, just use your selection tool, hover over the intersection and click and drag until the shape cuts, then release. Your intersection will become super sharp and you can just delete the excess. You can also just drag your line work about into sharp shapes quite easily. I use this one all the time to create sharp corners or quickly clean up a stroke. Plan your strokes. Strokes calculate once you release the brush, so a stroke that is really long with lots of twists and turns will be more complicated and therefore have more vertexes to calculate and more chances for you to just not like the result. I tend to do a single curve or straight line and then release. You'll find your own natural balance. Rotate the canvas. Use the canvas rotation. You'll have a direction that you naturally prefer when drawing, usually pulling the pen towards one bottom corner of the canvas. Don't fight that, just use it by rotating the canvas. For me, my horizontal lines that curve upwards tend to get a little bit sloppy without canvas rotation. Getting the best from yourself. This section might seem silly at first, but honestly, it's one of the most important parts of animating, setting yourself up as well as your tools. So here's a few tips for yourself. Warm up. I can't stress this one enough, and it's probably the one that I'm the most guilty of not doing. I get that you want to jump right into doing the animation, but spending some time doing basic warm-up exercises like straight lines, circles, hatching, or S-curves can really help when it comes to drawing more complex shapes, as you're already loosening up and getting into the zone. Just spend a couple of minutes drawing a variety of loose shapes. Draw from the shoulder or elbow. It's tempting, especially in cramped workspaces or smaller graphics tablets, to draw from the wrist, resting the hand on the tablet screen and just rotating the wrist to get curved lines. But your line work will be much better, smoother and more consistent if you use your whole arm to make the broader strokes. See also zooming in again previously. As you activate all the muscles in your arm to control the pen over a larger, smoother area, rather than relying on a cramped static muscle in a small work area on your screen, your lines will be much smoother. Obviously, this one depends on your workspace, which is another thing. Keep your workspace clean and free from distractions. If you're animating, that's all you should be doing. Try to keep the rest of your stuff out of the way. Things like your coffee mug, keyboard, mouse, armrest of your chair, random junk. If all of these things are around your tablet, you'll feel cramped and you'll draw cramped. Sounds dumb, but it's true. Take breaks, stretch, and maintain good posture. <laughs> okay, I lied. This is probably the worst one for me. My posture is terrible. I rarely take breaks or stretch, but once I made an active effort to do all three, I noticed my stamina, mood, and animation ability remain better for longer. Stand up and walk about every half hour or so. Do some light stretching in your arms and back. If you're lucky enough to have a standing desk, use it. Step out into the garden, enjoy the fresh air. Oh, 
Oh yeah, it's like 3 a.m. We've been animating all night. Stay hydrated. Drink plenty of water. <laughs> no, seriously though, stay hydrated. Headaches, cramps, itchy eyes, all bad things. In life, as in animation, take care of your body and soul and drink water. What have I missed? I'm sure that there's plenty of other tips that I haven't covered in this video. And if you have any unique workflow or tool tips, please do drop them in the comments below. I'd love to hear them. If you guys like this style of video, let me know because I'm sure I'll think of a bunch more tips and tricks as soon as I'm done editing. So there could be more in the future. In the meantime, thanks for watching. Let me know how you get on with these tips and I'll see you next time on Tip Tut. I know I say this at the end of every single video, but absolutely huge thanks to my members. They're such lovely people, so beautiful in both person and soul. Without them, Tip Tut would not be where it is today. So please consider clicking that join button below for exclusive perks and benefits. Subscribe for more tips, tricks, and tutorials. Thanks for watching.